Larry Kennewick headed over to Port Townsend. Gonna go over and take a look at a couple of the Coast Defense Force that made up the Triangle of Fire protecting Puget Sound. Right now we've uh, just left Coopville and uh, see a little good position here to see how the triangle was laid out. Hop up the deck here. So those white buildings and the hill to the right are uh, Fort Casey. It's Point Wilson and uh, Fort Warden over there. And then crossing over to the other side of the boat. Fort Flagler's on that bluff right there. So the three of them together had interlocking fields of fire that could uh, protect Puget Sound from an invading fleet. Also uh, on the little point there is uh, oh, the light stub that I can't remember the name of, but uh, we'll be visiting tomorrow. Take a look at the Morristown Point light stub. But uh, since we're here, might as well poke at it. at Fort Flagler, kind of at the uh, north end. And yes, I'm just reading the signs here, but clearly this is uh, searchlight storage. The days before radar, about the only way to find a ship at night would have been with the searchlights. And uh, searchlight drills were actually quite common. Uh, naval exercise up into the 40s. That's apparently where uh, appliances go to die. Quite the ventilators on this building. This to be some kind of a storage depot. Kind of get an idea of the extent of the fortifications here, and this is just one of the batteries. It stretches a good, I don't know, 100, 200 yards side to side.
Coastal Defense Multifunction Building. Plotting room for battery Wilhelm, switchboards, and storage batteries for the telephone system. So clearly this had 12-inch uh, guns, probably disappearing rifles. Large pipe laying in the plotting floor as part of periscope that allowed observers to track ships on Admiralty Inlet. Interesting. And this time, since I'm actually, you know, sometimes capable of learning, I brought a flashlight. Let's see what's in here. See the cable on the wall here. We saw the same at uh, Fort Stevens in Oregon. Tunnel just came down. This is uh, probably part of the switchboard. I think they said this was the battery room originally. Painted black. It's got a couple benches in here. Got a sink. And through the steel doors. That's a toilet. There's an intact, well, almost the intact toilet. Through more steel doors. That was a ladder. Another ladder. Looks like they may have gone up to uh, some kind of a platform up there. Uh, we're in the main cross cut here. Got a couple of pipes out of the floor there. Oh, hole in the floor I nearly fell into. That looks like a uh, powder elevator. Oh, much better. Okay. Another big hole in the floor there. See the junction box here. And the mechanism up there for hoisting something. These really do look like the Powder projectile hoist. So we must have moved from the multi purpose room into the battery itself at some point. Different design than I've seen in the other forts. We've got a davit, I guess would be the term. These, uh, 
handles here would have been used for rotating it. The hoist up there. Oil room, which goes nowhere. Part of the design of these canyons would have been that it would be nearly impossible to drop a shell vertically down into them. And so, uh, we're train here. And so the crews working here would have been pretty much invulnerable to return fire. Shell room here, kind of a small shell room. Gotta check the floor before walking. Got some kind of a structural on the ceiling here. And uh, it's kind of a brick or um, masonry construction as opposed to cast cement everywhere else. No idea what that was. So this is the this is the tunnel we entered through. Looking for markings. You can see the thickness of the walls here. That's a good 16 to 20 inches thick. Reinforced concrete. Another room with that masonry construction. So probably this side is mirrored from the other side, which would be a fairly typical design. We think those are probably powder rooms, powder hoist, so there'd be a, another shell hoist over here someplace. Electrical panel. And then another one of these canyons, again, with the, the davits there. Mirrored latrine. So if the mirroring continues, there should be a stairway right here. And we'll take that up and see what the upstairs looks like. So, Battery William Wilhelm. That's the canyon we were just in. Latrine's there. We came in through this building. The uh, observation point up there is probably what those ladders led to. And then these were where the uh, shell and powder came up from the lower floors. The, the tracks here on the floors where the carts would come into and the tracks would keep them lined up as the bags of powder came out of here, shell out of here. These ones are in much better shape than many of the others. That sprocket wheel there is probably for a chain to work the mechanism. Not 
sure what these are, but this would be an observation post. Probably a telephone box right there. And this is the view from the top. Again, shell, powder, hoist, whole thing's just repeated, mirrored on the other side. This first canyon that we were in. Before we go down there, let's uh, stick our heads up into the observation point. Here we see the, uh, those davits. We were looking at before. Interesting water spigot here. That's where we came in past. Those are the searchlight housings. There's our ride home. So interestingly, there's no holes there where ladders would come up. So I'm not sure exactly where those ladders led to. I would have thought it would be to this, but it doesn't look like it. And that's where we made entry into the structure. I suspect this is the periscope pipe they were talking about. It's a pretty iffy little piece of plywood to step on. So that stairway is the mirror of the one we came up. We've crossed the length of the, or the breadth, I guess would be the correct term, of the battery here. Let's see what's down here. This is by far the uh, least well-known of the forts that made up the Triangle of Fire, uh, whereas Warren is just in Port Townsend, and uh, everybody knows where Casey is because you go past it to the ferry. Flagler is harder to get to and sort of out in the middle of nowhere and less well-known. So it's good to finally get out here and see it myself. Coming up the stairs here, This would have been a uh, for probably a three-inch gun, and there was a sign just over there that I probably can't see from here. Battery John Rollins. So we've moved from Battery Wilhelm into Battery Rollins. These batteries tend to use this canyon design as opposed to, uh, say, Fort Casey, which had just a hill and then everything behind it was open. 
I'm not sure if this was a later design, more concerned about plunging fire or just kind of how the terrain was laid out and how it was easy to do it. So again with the, uh, the davits here, oil room, tool room, this is where your assholes hang out. Note the stalag uh, stalagmites? stalagmites on the ceiling. Another shelf handling table. Which is kind of interesting because if this was a three inch gun, I wouldn't, I don't know that table's native to this. Fuse box. Oh wow, this is actually an intact mechanism. Don't know how well that'll show up on the video. My flashlight's probably nearing end of life, but it's the first time I've ever seen one of these intact. There's the chain I was talking about earlier that would haul this carriage up on a continuous loop. Uh, the crank would be here through reducing gear. So you turn that crank which turns that gear and it's uh, replicated on the other side as well which turns this gear with a significant mechanical advantage turns this chain up to the uh, corresponding mechanism up there. There's one, two, three, four um, shell positions. So like I said, I've never, in all the forts I've been in, I've never seen an intact shell hoist before. Another, uh, another crank position that very likely had two people cranking on this. This is interesting, it's a wood, wooden door within the, uh, the concrete opening. Watching my footing here as my eyes adjust. Quite a large room. Powder room. Which indicates that might be a powder hoist rather than a shell hoist. And indeed coming over here, looks like we have, what's this assembly? This might be the, uh, the shell elevator. Two, yeah, these are shell elevators. We've got some kind of a cable mechanism there. See the corrosion, how the city channels corroded out over the years. And then these platforms, I assume would have been what they would have loaded the shells on. And it went up through the, those doors up there. So we have one powder hoist and two shell elevators. Shell elevators? I think those should be shell elevators. Ladder here. So this would probably be a shell room. Again, the wooden door inside the concrete. Double, double ladder configuration. 
curious to see up top what that looks like. This might have been a fire control plotting room. I was kind of hoping for something indicated, but these this pipe assembly is frequently um, seen for running telephone cable between fire control points. And then the ladders would indicate there was probably an observation point up above there. Another shell elevator. Paired. So shell rooms and then another powder hoist. Shell room there. Steel doors. Not entirely sure why they did this this way. Because that door and this door lead into the same space, yet they're duplicated. In fact, so does that door. So I'm not sure why they felt the need for three doors leading to the same place, but apparently that was a thing. And then I would presume, just because we're seeing a lot of repetition in the architecture, that the oil room is down here. And there's the oil room. So this one has another space off of it which we haven't seen before. Light fixture. Another shell room that kind of goes nowhere. I'm really, really quite intrigued by this because this really looks like a mount for a three inch gun. But the shell and powder handling spaces that we saw in there very much look like they're something much larger, like a 12 inch, 10 or 12 inch. So I would have expected a 10 or 12 inch gun pit up here, but I'm not seeing it. I'm just seeing these little three or maybe even six inch. So the ladders probably came into this space here. I'm wondering if there's not more more structure underneath us here. And indeed, it looks like there is. Though it appears there's no access to it from here. Interesting. So this would be shell elevator, shell elevator, powder hoist top.
I'm really quite confused by this, I have to say. And there's this pit over here, which I really don't know what to make of. I don't know if it's tied into the rest of it or what. But let's go see if we can find out. Now this looks like another three inch gun position. to be. Huh. How do I get up there? Huh. So yes, this is me continuing to be very confused as I wander around trying to find a way into where I want to go which is just right over there, but sometimes it's not so easy. I don't feel like messing with a ladder today. I'm gonna go around. The other advantage of going around here is that we'll get to read the sign and maybe we can figure out what the hell's going on because at the moment I'm thinking this was originally built for 10 or 12 inch guns and it was maybe later retrofitted with threes or sixes. So, that eh, sign's over there, I kind of missed it, but uh, yeah, still trying to figure this one out. So here's the top of the powder hoist. It's got a hinged door here that's frozen in the up position. And then the tops of the shellevators. This is that, uh, let's see, oh. So it's hard to tell from here, but I think this might be the top of the uh, ladders. So those ladders we saw down below were just a quick way to get up here, and they were did them in pairs because they did them in pairs. Yep, you can see the ladder in there. So these are just ladder ways up to the observation point. That would have been a telephone box.
and this would be the view from the observation point. Uh, you can probably kind of see here that uh, this site was not designed for tall people. I'm all of six foot one, and uh, you can see my head sticking up into the rafters, so details. And then again, everything's mirrored. Not only these fancy little water spigots. Yeah, there we go. Batteries equipped with two 10 inch guns on barbette mounts. So that's what we saw the, uh, the shell elevators and the uh, powder bags for. And then in 1943, it was reconfigured for three three-inch anti-aircraft guns, which is what's out there now. Fired a 617-pound projectile to a range of 9.2 miles. Could fire off one round every two and a half minutes. And interestingly, these were not on disappearing chance mounts. So it looks like the uh, the guns. probably uh, in there before they were removed. So we kind of came into this in the middle. Let's now head over to the left side. So right there at the multi-purpose building is where we made entry. And we're now going to move left along the gun line. Battery Wilhelm. So there's the mounts that they were using up here, not the disappearing mounts. Two 12 inch guns and barbette mounts. Battery Revere, which is the one we're about to go see. Battery Wilhelm, which is this one, and Battery Rollins, constituted the main gun line at Fort Flagler. Guns were removed in sulfur scrap in 42. Auxiliary power plant. Two 54 horsepower gas engines. So this is probably cable routing. The uh, power cable would come out of the building here and then go, you can see it falls out this line. And I would guess this might have been the gasoline feed line. Generator sat here. Sliding shutters. And a closet. Again, sliding rather than swinging doors in a lot of places. It's really amazing how well preserved this place is. I've not seen another fort that had anywhere near this level of preservation. Now pause it.
two 10 inch guns and barbette mounts. So the main gun line here looks like it was about six 10 inch guns, which is interesting because uh, that's approximately the armament of a battleship of the era. So if a large fleet showed up, this whole fort would essentially match the armament of one ship. Uh, make of that what you will. The flip side of that is, with three different forts firing, could probably, could probably uh, at least make life difficult on an evading fleet. So I would expect we'll see a lot of the same elements. Uh, we'll start at the top work back. Again, the uh, hoist there. Powder hoist. Shell elevators. This is essentially a, a copy of the other, other batteries. These would be the ladder ways, we've seen this before. That's a little different. Um, I would assume there was a cable run that passed through here. Yeah, so this would have been for the telephone box. Observation point here, another one over there. There's Point Wilson, and uh, the hill behind it would have uh, contained Fort Warden and can't quite see uh, Fort Casey from here, but it's behind those trees. Puget Sound's that way, Seattle's that way. It's interesting how each of these is laid out just a little bit differently. And also how they're all interconnected, at least up here at the upper level. That was probably a uh, probably a phone box from the fire control plotting room. These concrete trenches would have done an excellent job protecting crews from shells landing nearby. I mean, anything short of a direct hit on the trench line here is probably not going to do anything besides damage your hearing. Give you a headache you wouldn't believe. So yeah, this is the first position of Battery Wilhelm. So they're connected at the top level, but not the lower level. As similar as these are, the, the slight architectural differences are interesting. I'm going to have to look into when they were built and what design changes would have gone with each iteration. Again, three sets of doors going from this same going into the same space. This is the shell room that was or the tool room. It was closed off on uh, the third battery. Oil room. You notice this oil room does not have an uh, extension like uh, the third one did.
latrine. It does get dark down here. So, powder bag hoist. Shellevator. The fact that you have one powder hoist for every two shell elevators probably says something about how fast it, how long it took to load, relatively to load them. There's the two ladders. So the ladder there, ladder, oh that's a shell elevator. Is that one? Double ladder system? Is that a shell elevator? That might be a shell here. No, that's definitely a ladder. So again, little quirks. This one has one ladder, whereas most of the others have two. So, okay, I may be screwing this up. Because this says this is a projectile hoist. So what I was thinking were shell elevators may in fact be the powder bag hoist, which actually kind of makes a little bit of sense if you uh, look at where the, where the rooms are. And it took two powder bags for each shell. So having two powder bag hoists and one shell hoist. Okay, that makes sense. It also makes a certain amount of sense from the standpoint of the steel shutters at the top of the powder hoist because a near miss or flying shrapnel wouldn't set off a or wouldn't set off a shell, but it would set off a bag of powder. And so they took greater efforts to protect the powder from shrapnel than they did the shells. Oil room down there. Ladder here. It's another interesting little architectural quirk. I'm not entirely sure why they did that considering if you can't walk from here to there, I don't know. It made sense at the time, I guess. I guess it would allow somebody going down not to go into the gun area, but how worthwhile is that? Who knows? So, powder, powder, shell, which also makes sense because that's how you'd want stuff to come out to go into the gun. Now what's interesting is we only saw one ladder down there, but clearly there's two? I don't know. So that's battery Paul Revere. Let's go see what else I can find.